Greetings and welcome to another Make Loud Monday. This one's for all the four stringers out there. We're going to talk about 10 great bass sounds that you can get with uh, just a couple of different configurations on your amp and a couple of different kinds of drive pedal. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's not waste any time. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about today was just going direct straight into your audio interface. Uh, this is something that you can do. You can get a very clean sound with it if that's something that you want. So we're going to flip over to the Studio One view. Got the uh, Spectrum Analyzer open so that you can see uh, what the frequencies are that are coming out. And for today's discussion, I'm going to just play the same riff each time. They're probably not going to be played at exactly the same tempo because I'm not bothering with a click track. We're just, and there's no, no effects on, no processing in the DAW uh, since I'm plugged directly in. Um, and this is an active uh, bass, but I keep the preamps turned all the way off. Um, I don't, the battery's probably been dead for 12 years inside this bass because I never turn the preamps on because I don't feel like I need them. Uh, so anyway, here's our... That's our sound, uh, but here's the riff that we're going to play, and you can listen to it right here, just direct into one of the preamp channels on my Studio One Audio Box 44 VSL. It's a it's an older interface, but um, it's probably just about the same as whatever you have. So here's the riff we're going to be playing. good sustain on this old this old beast here um so that's it and uh, i i chose that riff because i feel like it's the kind of riff that you might hear in many different genres uh we're going to hear that where it's going to sound like a could be in an indie rock song and a folk song and a pop song and a metal song grunge song uh just by dressing it up in a couple of different ways so so that's that's that um and I've, I've marked each of the, uh, the recording tracks uh, here so that you can get a sense of what the, uh, what the signal chain is. And the next one that we're going to do, I'm actually going to have to turn my amp on. I didn't even turn it on yet. So I'm going to pause the camera for a second and turn on the amp, and then we'll go from there. Okay, that didn't take too long. Uh, I just had to turn it on. Uh, remember to shut off the... Uh, I usually have the reverb uh, that's built into my amp on. And uh, one thing I wanted to quickly show you is uh, I'm going to switch to the other camera for a second. Oops. Uh, switch to the other camera. Okay. I want to just quickly show you that uh, here's my amp right here. And you can see that I have the bass, middle, and treble turned about three quarters, and the presence turned about three quarters of the way up. Uh, and I've got that actually on both channels. The The upper channel is the clean channel, the lower channel is the crunch channel, which we'll visit later. So for right now, we've got it set up uh, basically like a guitar amp. So I'm going to play the bass through the guitar amp so you can hear how that sounds. And then I'm going to basically just turn all the EQs from 9 o'clock down to, th or from 3 o'clock down to 9 o'clock. So, uh, from 75% on to 25% on, and uh, and you'll hear the difference in character between those two. So let's go ahead and uh, and now we're going to do this one. So this is clean guitar amp. I'm not actually going to record these. Uh, I don't feel like there's a need to, but we'll just use the record indicator here. So back in the Studio One view now, you can see. Um, I've got the record indicator uh, on this track here, which says clean guitar amp. So uh, that's, I'm just, I'm not going to record the actual uh, signals here because like I said, I'm, I'm going to be playing them at slightly different tempos. They're not going to line up and it really won't serve a purpose for us. But uh, just to keep track of where we are. So this is the clean guitar amp signal and, uh, and here's that same riff. Uh, again, no modifications to the sound, just the amplifier. So 
So you can see there's you know kind of a different frequency response there. Again, we've we've filtered out some of the very low frequencies that you wouldn't expect to get on a guitar amplifier, emphasized some of the higher frequencies. But overall, I think there's kind of a richer signal, a more more oomph to the uh, to the sound. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically, like I said, I'm going to turn those knobs from the three o'clock setting down to the nine o'clock setting except for the bass. The bass we leave up. And we just turn the others down to about, uh, about nine o'clock. The presence I turn almost all the way off. So now you're gonna hear the same riff and, uh, and you'll hear what that sounds like. And we'll move our indicator down to sound number three, clean bass amp. So definitely a lot more bottom end to that, which you would expect because we set it up like a bass amp. Um, although it is the, uh, you know, the modeling is the same as it's, it's a bass man. Uh, so it's, uh, six, six L sixes, uh, into, uh, to, uh, I forget what cab sim I have here. It's either, I think it's a two by 12 cause that's the cabinet that I actually have. Uh, so, uh, so two by 12, six L sixes, uh, two A7 preamps, you know, all of that, uh, just what you'd expect in that type of uh, an amp head. Uh, so now we're still not going to plug in any effects, but now we're going to flip over to the crunch channel. So the crunch channel is uh, EL84s, uh, and so that's the basic sound. And we're going to basically just uh, we're going to go about halfway between the bass and the guitar settings. So we'll set the mid and trebles to about 12 o'clock, which is about halfway, and the presence will, will bring down a little bit. Presence is at about 10.30. So let's try, and purple means we're on the crunch channel. So there it is, you can see it. So here's what that's gonna sound like on the crunch channel. interesting is it kind of doesn't matter how much of the mids and treble I take out on the on the crunch channel the EL84 it doesn't seem to push the bottom end as well as the basement settings the 6L6s so I kind of just usually if I'm going to do bass on the crunch channel I just leave it set up like a guitar amp because uh, I'm too lazy to turn the knobs uh, so so those are kind of your your unmodified signals no pedals uh, just either directly into the audio interface or directly into the amplifier and then from there directly into the audio interface. Now we're going to start messing with some pedals. So I'm going to show you my signal chain. Uh, basically everything is going to just start uh, with one pedal and then I'm going to run it into the NS2 noise suppressor just to take out any hum that we get uh, as a result of the uh, just electronic interference in the room here. Uh, but that's not really modifying the tone in any way. Um, and if we, if it turns out that I don't need it, I'll take it out, but it, I usually need it in here. So give me a second to set up the, the first plugin and we'll be right back. Okay, so the first effect we're gonna use today is the Keeley compressor. Um, I usually use this kind of like an overdrive uh, and we're gonna listen to how that sounds. So let me get her plugged in and uh, we'll switch over to the Studio One view. Okay, so we got the Keeley compressor set up. Um, you can see we've got our indicator there on the next track. Uh, 
You can see Studio One, I've got the track icons displayed. That's a new feature. Um, I don't really see the point, but it's cute and it's not getting in my way because this is just a demo video. I uh, don't think I would bother with that on an actual uh, song that I was producing. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, here's what it's going to sound like. So for the settings, just to be clear on the Kaylee compressor, um, I've still got it set on Humbucker because uh, I always leave it there. It just gets a little bit more output. Tones at about noon. Uh, level is at about parity. Blend is at 50%. Uh, so just, just some basic compression. So here's, uh, here's that same riff. using a noise suppressor so it's letting all that sustain come through uh, really great feature on the uh, on the compressor so a little bit more thickness I think to it but really not uh, any particular crunch on it uh, on this one so let's go ahead and move on to our next effect and the next effect that we're going to be looking at is the mojo mojo overdrive so here it is right here and uh, I think I've done a video on this one before, but we're going to plug that in for the bass, and uh, as soon as I get it plugged in, we'll do a quick demo with that one. All right, Mojo Mojo is plugged in. Uh, just a quick review of the settings. Uh, got the level at about 50%, treble is at about 50%, got the drive turned up uh, about halfway, so not really getting into where this tends to behave more like a distortion pedal, but more like a traditional overdrive. And the base um, EQ setting is up at about three quarters. So uh, here we go again. So the overdrive really comes out a little bit more when we get into the uh, into the, um, the 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 treble frequencies. This part of the song, that on the uh, on the D string. Uh, so pretty cool. All right, now let's uh, let's move on into uh, the a true distortion pedal. We're gonna uh, we're gonna go to this little guy right here. This is the uh, the black rat pedal that I've demoed couple weeks ago birthday monkey brought me so let me get that plugged up and then we'll uh, we'll demonstrate that one all right black rat is plugged in uh, I realized I hadn't been keeping up with my little red ball indicator so uh, there was no indicator for the mojo that we just did but now we're, we're back on track here we got a little our little indicator uh, which indicates that we're doing the uh, the rat pedal right now the, the black rat I've got it on the vintage setting. Um, I actually prefer whatever the down switch is on it, but the vintage setting I think is a little bit more character for the purpose of this video. So here we're gonna go. Um, distortion and volume about uh, noon, and the filter is at about uh, at about three o'clock, uh, just to bring through some some level of treble frequencies. Otherwise, it tends to sound super muddy. Uh, so. Here we go with this. sure why we're getting that weird pulsing there but uh, anyway you can see how we're starting to get a lot more grit to this still on a clean channel still have not engaged the uh, NS2 noise suppressor I'm surprised that we're getting away with this but pleased um, and uh, and like I said no other effects so the last one that we're going to do on the clean setting uh, the clean base basement type setting is 
the Electro Harmonics ripped speaker. So this is a fuzz pedal that I that I rather enjoy using. So let me get that plugged in, and then we'll showcase that one. All right, we got the rip, rip speaker plugged in, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of explaining, which may sound like apologizing, uh, but just because I want to showcase why this particular fuzz. So I've got the uh, the fuzz turned up at about three quarters, and the rip feature also turned up about three quarters, uh, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, and the rip feature basically works like a voltage sag, so you're probably going to hear at some point where it sort of glitches out and just drops the signal entirely, but I wanted you to hear some of that rippy, flabby, stab your speaker with a switchblade kind of sound. Uh, and the tone is at about uh, 12 o'clock. So again, here we go, uh, EHX rip speaker. just drops out there at the end as the voltage sag engages. Uh, we'll do it one more time. This time we'll do it with the rip down at about 50%. And you can see, as you look at the frequency analyzer there, that same sustained note all the added harmonics uh, that you get with a fuzz pedal also sustain. So there's just some really cool things that you can do. And again, this is all, I turn that off. That channel's clean as a bell, one effect, just the speaker. Now we're gonna bounce o back over to the crunch channel and showcase a couple other combinations. Uh, so give me a quick second to set that up. And we'll be right back. Okay, so next up is the Mosky Silver Horse. This is a very inexpensive Klon variant. And uh, I, I've made a little bit of a change here. Uh, I said that I was going to leave the crunch channel settings kind of where they were before, but I'm not. I actually turned them down to mirror exactly what I had on the clean channel. So the bass preamp is still at about 3 o'clock, 3 quarters of the way up. Treble and mids are at about 9 o'clock, so 25% engaged. Presence is basically off. And the clean sound still has a lot of treble throat to it, but there it is. And now we're going to engage the, uh, the Silver Horse. Tone is also at about 9 o'clock, so still very bass heavy on the tone. Gain is at about noon, volume's at about noon and the voice toggle is in the down position. So here's what it sounds like. So you can see that no, basically no matter what you do, no matter how much you try and get that that AC30 amp to sound more bassy and more boomy, it just won't. Um, but we're gonna we're just gonna keep going with these settings. Uh, so that was the uh, the Silver Horse, and our last pedal for the day is gonna be another fuzz pedal, and this is the Beltsville Legend by NSP Effects. Um, really cool fuzz pedal. It has an oscillator circuit built into it. There's actually a, a new version of this, a V2. Uh, if you want to pick up the, the version 2, uh, it's got some cool new features on it. Um, I, think, uh, I think there's a couple of them available on Reverb. Keep checking because uh, he keeps making them. Uh, so I'm going to find the right fundamental frequency on the oscillator and let that be engaged. Uh, so it's going to get hairy for this last one, but uh, give me a second to set it up and uh, we'll hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that took a couple seconds because I had to play around a little bit with which fundamental frequency uh, I should set the oscillator on this to. And basically, what do I mean by that? Well, when you turn this pedal on and you don't have any other signal going through it, it creates a signal 
It's just basically a, a tone generator. <laughs> You can see at what frequencies it's doing that. So the fundamental frequency is somewhere around 160, and that mapped pretty closely to this uh, D octave note. And the reason I chose that is when I chose something too low, it got glitchy when I played the second half of the riff. This part. These two notes in particular did not play nicely with a low tone generator. The low tone generator kind of canceled those notes and it really interrupted the the uh, flow of the of the pattern. But setting it to a higher frequency when I was playing the lower notes, they actually seemed to work harmonically well with that tone. Uh, you might or might not agree, but you're going to see what it sounds like right now because we're going to do it. So uh, brace your ears for a few seconds of, uh, of just the tone before I get into playing, and then I'll turn it off as quickly as I can afterwards. So here we go. <laughs> seem to take out that low A, um, maybe because I got it too close. Uh, but anyway, uh, and if I turn the oscillator all the way off, let's listen to it with the oscillator all the way off. frequencies uh, that you get with a, a, a well-constructed fuzz. So I hope that I've demonstrated to you that you don't need a guitar to sound like a guitar. Um, and with a bass and just a couple of different ways of increasing and decreasing gain uh, and a little bit of basic tone shaping that you probably have built into your amplifier, you can get a tremendous variety of sounds. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's what I hope you'll try. So uh, give it a shot, see what you come up with. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon.